Hello and welcome. My name is Kathy A. We are back on plan. <laughs> Threw you for a loop there, didn't I? Oh my goodness. Yep. Well, you were very good sports about that whole little two-hour uh, video series I did all about funerals and cemeteries and writing your will and stuff. Thank you so much for watching. And I think I can give college credits for those two hours if you made it through both of them. Um, and I do pour my... I do want to remind you that this book, um, I'm Dead Now What, is like a workbook where you can fill in information so that when your family or friends or roommate or husband or whatever finds you, um, they can go through this and know what to do. And then there's this black folder where you can put your important papers. It's a um, like an accordion folder with tabs. And you can put your important papers in there. So between these two things, and I actually wrote my will. I downloaded a PDF template of a legal will and filled it all in. It was really easy, very easy, and it was free. So um, I'll put the link down below for that. Um, it's not anything I'm commissioned for. I don't work for those people. Um, but, I mean, it was so easy. And you know, I'm going to go over to the bank and have it notarized. And... It was easy. The will part was easy. The rest of it, still working on it. <laughs> um, I thought I would do my April faves and flops a little bit early because between the Sephora stuff and the Ulta 21 days and just in general, I have been going a little nuts. So let's start with things for life and I have really been enjoying this. This is a, a lighted makeup mirror that you put in your purse. Absolutely wonderful. Let me just open this up here. So you see it's got like two sides and then when the lights come on, isn't that neat? So you can check your makeup in the light and it's got a magnifying side so you can kind of turn it sideways and see how badly your concealer looks. <laughs> oh my God. It's a 10 by I think. It's just, yeah. What did somebody say in, in another video? I could see my thoughts. It was so close. <laughs> um, I usually say I can see my DNA molecules, but yeah, this is a great little thing. I, it was really cheap too. I, I don't know, seven or eight bucks, but I throw it in my purse. I got it off of Amazon and it's, it's a terrific thing to have. I have, because of my new job and traveling, having to be up early and all that stuff, I have had trouble sleeping some nights and so I read that if you put a couple of drops of lavender oil um, on your pillow or under your pillow, uh, you can sleep. But what I found was um, is that you can take a, a paper napkin or a Kleenex even and just use a Kleenex and put a couple of drops of lavender oil and it just, just the scent of it, um, it's not on your sheets, it's not on your pillowcases, and you can remove it if it's bothering you. <laughs> but the lavender oil really helps settle, settle something. I don't know, it triggers some kind of whatever. I'm not, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> but I do know that this works really well. And I, I thought of this myself, putting it on the, the Kleenex on the side so you can throw it down at the bottom of the bed when you don't need it anymore. But uh, lavender oil, like an essential oil, a couple of drops on a paper napkin or a Kleenex folded up right next to your nose when you're falling asleep and it really does help you fall asleep. So, um, something new in the shower. <laughs> okay. This is Lumi, and those of you who watch those cute little ads that they have, really kind of embarrassing. Like if you're with somebody else and you see these ads, they're absolutely embarrassing. Oh my God. Um, this is the Lumi Acidified Body Wash. And um, I have the regular Lumi, uh, the deodorant cream stuff that you put in the nether regions, under your breasts, under your arms and stuff. It's like a de regular deodorant. It kills bacteria that creates the smell. Well, the body wash apparently is something you can use um, to kind of kill it before it starts. Uh, what I do is, is um, there's different flavors. And I, I'll be damned, their flavors are just not the greatest smells. 
I think I'm gonna try a different one. This is the melon um, cucumber, and it's more melon than cucumber. And then this one is the clean tangerine, but it smells chemical tangerine. So, but you know what, I'm not that near all this stuff. What I do is um, I wash um, generally with Refresh from uh, Trader Joe's. And this is a wonderful citrus kind of uh, scent for a body wash. I wash all over with that. And then I just take this in my hands and just put it in those areas where I feel I could use a little extra help where that sort of odor thing happens. So um, this is so awkward. This is more awkward than the dead stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, this is a great little body wash. I mean, and, and if you use it just sparingly in, the, in those areas and you use a regular body wash everywhere else, I think it's a great idea. I mean, that's... Oh God, this is, this is like way TMI, way TMI. Anyway, it's very good, okay? But they have some different flavors. I, I personally think I would try a different flavor than the melon cucumber. I watched an ad where the woman said, oh, this cucumber melon is great, oh, you know. And I thought, oh, well, I'll try that. And I'm thinking of the smell of cucumber. Yeah, that's not too bad, I can handle that. But it's mostly melon, so. Refresh from Trader Joe's, real cheap, really good body wash, and then I use this just in the nether regions and places where there would be a problem with bacterial odor. These are fun fails because I had to have them because of the Sephora sale. The first fun fail, <laughs> just, and I still haven't received all my order, by the way. It's, one of them's taking two weeks to get to me. This is the, um, Light Up Your Eyes Clinique Set. I don't know if you can read all that stuff. But you get with this, you get an eye palette, thusly, and you get a mascara, full size, meh, and you get um, this eye makeup remover, which stings my eyes. So. Um, I thought, and again, a brush too with the with the uh, with this palette. Now, what I've had in the past is I've fallen for this before. When Clinique has put out a palette with like an eyeliner and a lipstick or something as a set, I run right to it because it looks so darn tempting. These are the chalkiest. This is like. I don't know, the cream shop, you know, that you get in the drugstore. It's just the worst formula ever. And I, I had to fix what I did today. I, I used this this morning and I had to fix it. A wet and wild palette I had to use to fix this because it was so chalky and it's one of those uh, eyeshadow formulations where you put it on and an hour later you're like, where is it? It's gone. It's like it dissipates into the makeup uh, atmosphere. So, I mean, there's a couple of the dark shades. I don't mind the gray shimmer. That's not too bad. It's under my eyes. And the brown shimmer's not too bad. And this light shimmer's not too bad. But the rest of these colors are absolutely chalky. Hardly any pigmentation. The brush really sucks. It's a, it's a double-ended brush. It had potential because it has that rounded side, which I love rounded brushes. They look like a little ball. But it just, it was, it's the wrong fiber fill or something. I don't get the fibers for this, but I'm, this is going back. Definitely going back. Yeah, what a waste of money that was. And the, and the mascara was, was really meh. I mean, I put it on initially, it was okay for daytime lashes. It was, it was separated and it didn't, you know, it didn't leave dings or anything and it didn't smear. So I guess it was okay in that respect, but it didn't give me the big full volume length that I really like with mascaras and so many others, even cheapy ones do a better job than this. So yeah, Clinique, big fail. And I can't even find it now on Sephora website. I don't know if they just had a few and sold out of them or if they decided too many people are bringing them back. I don't know. Oh man, Ooh. Rare Beauty. This is the Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. This was a big hot mess on me. I have dry skin with texture. This was shade 24 Neutral which 
um, the girl actually did the little QR thingy with the camera. She said, oh, I need to take off your makeup so I can get a good reading on you. So she took this like cotton pad and swished it all off my makeup here. And then she swished off a big clunk of my makeup with my contour off here. So I had these two white dots, right? Then she uses the little camera thing and she goes, oh, okay, you're too light, blah, blah, blah. So she goes in, she pulls this one out and this is supposedly my best shade. And it was awful, just awful. I don't know if you can see it. Light orange, yep, you're right, it's light orange. Perfect shade from that camera thing it's I just that camera thing at Sephora I mean it's like hello <laughs> yeah really okay it was no coverage and then it quickly and definitely went to all of the dry patches on my face and all is sunk into all of the lines uh, almost quicker than any other foundation or tinted moisturizer I've ever tried and I like Selena Gomez except for that last song where she really slammed, uh, what's his name, Bieber. Um, but I, I really, this was such a waste of money. The Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer um, in 24N, 24 Neutral was a light orange color. So I don't know if just, you know, their system is off or what, but yeah, this is going back. And I mean, terrible, terrible texture. It wasn't serum-y at all. It wasn't hydrating. It's really made, I think, for somebody with oily skin and somebody maybe 12 or 13 years old. I don't know. But it definitely didn't work for me. What did work for me from Rare Beauty is this gorgeous concealer brush. Oh my God. And I have on order, um, I have the Angie Hot and Flashy concealer brush. They just released them all to be sold separately. You don't have to buy that $125 set. You can get them individually. And um, I got this one from Rare Beauty because it looks similar to it. And this is before I knew the Hot and Flashy one was going to be available. But I did order that because I, I will always support Lisa J and, of course, Angie. Um, Yep, this is a really nice brush and it's very similar in shape where it has this kind of um, large, dense, but, but curved so you can get in there. Uh, bristles on the end, absolutely wonderful. This was, um, I got this in the sale, this is the Liquid Touch Brush, concealer brush, and it's absolutely wonderful. So Rare Beauty, this was a hit, definitely was a hit. Also a hit from... Um, from Sephora was the blush uh, from the LYS or Love Your Selfie brand. I have two of them. The one I just got is this brand new one. This one is called Self Love and this one is called Kindness. Self Love and Kindness. I really like these these blushes and this line. I think it is a woman owned line. Uh, very very nice um, cream blushes and it's something you know you really should think about when you are over the age of 50 um, it really melds into your skin nicely and powders can sometimes bunch up or look textury and dry whereas the cream seem to melt more into your skin so they are a great idea um, also a big surprise was this Sephora this is a powder foundation I don't remember if I tried it when I did my Sephora full face, but I do like it. I think I got the wrong color. I think this is 16 Linen. Cool Linen. I thought it would be a pretty close match. Um, it's just slightly dark and actually a little bit yellow, so I don't know how to get a good color in this so that it, um, so that it works, but it's a very nice powder foundation. I would put it right up there with some of the higher end uh, brands and this is the Sephora brand so it was it was great and I got it on the sale it had the 30 percent off so I do like the Sephora uh, powder foundation even on my older skin it didn't make me look dry and icky and flaky and stuff this was good this is much better than that liquid from Rare Beauty I tried something new uh, this is a item I guess it's a green clean 
brands. I guess we're supposed to start thinking of our skin as absorbing all these toxins from all the chemistry in our makeup. There's nothing safe in this world. <laughs> nothing anymore. So for my blush, I thought I would go clean and green. And this item is the name of the brand. This blush line is um, in Oopsie. Oopsie. <laughs> I, I was looking at all the blushes from this particular brand and this one let me just put it on here you can build it up but um, this one and another one and I said you know what I want a blush in my collection called oopsie <laughs> I love this so I don't know if you can see it too well maybe I can put a little bit more on so you can see how pretty it is a nice spring color pretty for summer and spring I have it on today. Let me just add a little bit more so I can look like the little old lady with too much blush. It's very nice. It pulls coral coral pink more so than the coral orange from Item. <laughs> Item Beauty. And it wasn't very expensive either, which I think is a pretty nice thing for Sephora product. I keep trying this. This is that whole definition of insanity thing where you keep trying the same thing over and over and expect different results. Well, I had tried this. It's been a hot minute since I tried this and didn't like it. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go back and try the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue because a lot of people list that as their favorite foundation of all time. And I'm like, maybe they changed the formula. Right. <laughs> No, they didn't change the formula, and I still don't like it. This is bamboo. Um, it just, it settles, it disappears. It just initially looks so nice, and then an hour later, my whole chin is red. I'm a little patchy around the nose. I'm patchy up here. It's just not a long-lasting enough tinted moisturizer or whatever this stuff is supposed to be. Tinted Hydrating Gel Serum. Yeah, for an hour, maybe, but it doesn't last. It's definitely not mask friendly either. Oh my God. It was all like, it looked like I had a beard of red blotchiness when I pulled my mask off and my chin was bright red and had polka dots. Oh, I hate that, polka dots in it. And I couldn't do anything and I was at work. So Complexion Rescue, I'm glad I got the smaller size, but it is going back. So I just, I can't keep giving them a chance one chance after another. I mean, I do try to listen to you guys with the things that you say you like. I tried it the second it came out, and then I tried it a year later when I thought they changed the formulation. Same thing. I don't like it. Complexion Rescue from Bare Minerals on dry, older, textured skin. It does not work, and it wears off very quickly if you have a mask on, and I still wear a mask. I still do. Speaking of what I'm wearing, the foundation I'm wearing is the Bounce the uh, Beauty Blender Bounce. Uh, you know, I haven't tried it in a while. I don't. I think I liked it when it came out, but then I got inundated with other foundations, as we do on YouTube a lot of times. You'll hear us talk and rave about a foundation, and then you won't see it again for a year, and they'll bring it up in their yearly favorites, and you're like, oh, I don't remember her talking about that. But I really liked the bounce. Um, let me see if you can you can see it. But I'm 64. Remember, be kind. Be kind. Blend 2.10. That is the and I got one of those like samplers with my uh, with my order and it had the bounce beauty stuff in it and the 2.1 is a really nice shade for me. It matched pretty well, so I like it. I may actually get a full size of this. Good idea. Um, this other this came in. Um, it was a, a 100 point perk and this is the Clinique. Um, all about eyes eye cream. Oh my gosh, I've been enjoying this. I think I don't know if you can see I've got I've gone through most of it. I really like this eye cream. What a difference it makes in how your concealer goes on and stays. It's really a nice eye cream and some of you commented below and said the rich version is even better than the regular. This is the regular version. I guess there's a rich version of this as well. So Clinique you know, Clinique is so hit and miss. Uh, one of my favorite lipsticks of all time is one of this Pop Clinique in Melon Pop. It's it's one of my favorite lipsticks of all time, and it's Clinique. This is perfect for spring and summer. I love this. I love the formula. It's nice. 
Uh, Clinique is hit or miss with me, and they keep their classics going. If it works, they don't they don't change it. Like a lot of us get used to something, and then the company changes. It's like, come on, God, I just got used to that lipstick shade, or I just got used to that. I love that blush. Even whole lines are closing. You know, people will say they found a dupe for something, and I get all excited and I think, oh, I like the main thing. I'll try the dupe because it's so much less money. Well. Uh, I'd rather not say who it is because I love her to death and I don't want her to feel bad, but she said that this um, one size from Patrick Starr um, is, is a dupe for the Joa. Um, this is Prime Dation All-in-One Foundation. And so I had them side by side and they are completely different, completely different. And I uh, the Patrick Star spreads more uh, thick moussey and stays. The Joa is kind of a shiny uh, tinted moisturizer feel to it and it just it's gone in an hour. It's another one of those foundations that after an hour you you know you see it's patchy, your your chin is red with polka dots and it just it never really fully settled for me. It wasn't drying, but it just never fully really looked good. It never was a cohesive good look and it wore off so easily with my mask and just with eating and everything else. It absolutely is awful. I and mean, you can see the difference in, now I, I applied this first and then I applied this. So you can see they're not the same formula. I know they're different colors, but they're not the same formula. And that was the other thing, online this looked like the same color. But it's still not dry, it's shiny. It's shiny like a uh, screen things. It's very shiny. It never really set down like a foundation should. So it was a big fail. The Joa um, Primation, Primadation, or whatever they call it. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. So Joa, I do like the company a lot. It's a Korean based uh, skincare line. And they did send me like a little gift set along with um, with the foundation, which I thought was very nice. And they sent me this cute little sticker that says, I like it like that. Wasn't that a Dave Clark Five song? Yeah, I like it like that, yeah. Okay, well this is the um, illumination stick. Looks like they took a slice off of the top of it. And it's a very pretty, uh, very light kind of it reminds me a lot of the um, the glow you get from the Sephora um, these dawn to dusk things the, the uh, Sephora highlighter I really like it though because it's a, a stick form it's a cream form and it, it just goes on so nicely and stays put. I really liked this. This was much better hit than the uh, foundation for sure. But I would actually probably purchase this from Joa. I think it's really nice. And it's a shade ivory. This comes in several different shades. Uh, and they appreciate that there are dark skin tone people in the world, which is, you know, some companies do not acknowledge that there's some um, darker skin people in the world when they set up their product line shades. And I really don't want to support those because I just think, you know, this isn't the 1940s, you know, come on. All right, so Joa, this is the uh, illumination stick in ivory. I absolutely love it. I think it's a very beautiful, subtle glow, which is something I don't like this neon from space kind of stripes I see some women wearing. And some of them it looks kind of greeny and goldy and blue and I'm thinking, I'm thinking you have no idea lady what this looks like in the sunlight and I, I kind of want to say something you know but like I have filters in public I have filters but man I'm like oh god I wish I could tell you how awful that looked and I'm sure people want to say that to me sometimes too <laughs> but anyway that's that's the illumination stick from Joa um, another fail I had to write it down because I already returned it it's the Maybelline green foundation
very serum-y and light. It covered nothing. It dried up and it looked so patchy. Oh my God, it went into all my wrinkles. It accentuated lines I didn't think I had. <laughs> so the Maybelline Green Edition Foundation um, was a fail. And it doesn't even matter what color it was. It was a formulation thing. It was awful. Patrick Ta. All right, this is one of those things I bought for the hype and for the, oh, it's the best in the world and the formula blends so well and it's just gorgeous. So I bought, this is number one. This isn't the second one. And initially, you know, these two shades are cream shades and they have a little cover on them. So nice. But that's very thoughtful that they do that little color thing. The rest of these shades, hit or miss. But what's disturbing to me about this palette is that there is no matte ivory shade. You know, like, speaking of wet and wild, you know, like brulee, creme brulee, brulee. See, I hit pan on mine. I love it so much. You need, you need this in here, like instead of this thing, they could have put a cream shade and that would have saved this palette maybe, maybe. But I found it was kind of hard to blend this palette. It's very pigmented. Um, some of the shimmer shades were nice. Um, this, this shade for the uh, transition was very nice. I didn't care for this. This one was quite nice, you know, but it's a light topper. It wasn't even really, you know, the va va boom kind of metallic foil I thought it was going to be. This one, it just pull, it pulls reddish pink and I'm not a reddish pink person. I was so unhappy with this. Um, the dark shade was fine for, for lining and for the corners, but, and then this, I like this kind of uh, warm toned mahogany red uh, for kind of the transition between the dark up to the crease shade. I thought that was nice too, but there was just, this just failed me. I just could only make like one eye look. You know, I kept making the same eye look and it was like, yeah, you know, and I had to go to my Wet n Wild to get the, the shade that I need for my base. So I think this was a fail, really. It's going back. It's going back. And I don't know about the new one because the new one seems to have a matte light shade in it, but it's more rosy tone. And again, I'm not really a rosy tone kind of person. So I did break down and get the Natasha Denona. Uh, this is the Glam. Is this the Glam palette? Yeah, this is the Glam palette. Um, yeah, it's it's nice. I have the mirror here. I hadn't yet <laughs> removed the mirror. There we go. <laughs> there she is. Um, I've been enjoying this palette. I, I actually think I enjoy this from ColourPop more. I don't know, it, it for some reason, it seems like there's more shades to work with in this than in this. But the formulation for this is very nice. I mean, her formulations are very smooth and creamy and they blend nicely. And I know I'm a total cheapskate, but I actually prefer this one. So, <clears throat> I don't know. You can dress them up, but you can't take them anywhere, right? I tell you. But I mean, there's a lot of neutral and cool tone shades in here, and I like that because everything usually pulls orange or warm in a lot of these palettes. What is it with neutral palettes coming out? Everybody's got a neutral palette again. It's like we've come around full circle here. So yeah, this is very nice. The Glam palette, it's not going back. Very nice. The Tarte versus Mario. Now, I, I saw somebody say that um, the Mario's were sold out, so they bought the Tarte uh, lip plumping lip stuff. Lip plump. Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. And this is the Mario um, lip balm pump thing, too. So the Mario, I got it before it sold out, and I absolutely love it. It's, it's a beautiful formulation. It sits nicely on the mouth. It's a very um, hydrating feel, balmy feel. It lasts a while. I was really pleased with how long this lasted for being kind of a lip balm kind of thing. It's a pretty color. This is the peachy one, I believe. Apricot Glow. Apricot Glow. Uh, this one 
This is white peach. So I thought it was going to be similar. This is the tart one. Now they have a similar, you know, top to them, and you push it from the bottom, and then it's a lighter shade. And from the initial, I turn it on. There's a strong coconut scent to this on top of everything else. Um, it just didn't do anything at all for me and it never really dried down and it wore off long before this ever wore off. They're not the same at all and I gotta stop listening to people with their dupes because this this is this tart one just didn't I could have found this at the drugstore with one of the physician formulas I'm sure because it's just coconut it's pleasant looking it doesn't last the Mario beats the Mario wins this is the the winning bomb the Mario I really like this formulation a lot let me just take that off and I'll put the Mario on And because they were like peachy, apricotty, I thought they were similar shades, but it was, it, this was much lighter and it did nothing for me as far as helping my lips look healthy. It also, um, you could kind of see the sheerness in it and you could see all those little lines and wrinkles in my lips with this, but not with this. This just was totally very, very um, hydrating and smoothing and it's a pretty color as well. I might get another color in this, but this is going back, the tart. So, so you can see it's pretty, even close up, and I have gnarly lips, I really do. Um, two fails in the lip lacquer, uh, they both did the same thing, they gave me that line of demarcation. This one is called To the Left. And this one really gave me a bad line of demarcation. And initially I thought it was going to be really pretty on, but it just was awful. It separated, it made that little line, and then it got all like cracky on my lips. And I have, I use my, um, I have a lip thing that I use. Really nice, but yeah, nice color, bad formula. And the same thing with this one. Uh, this one is Girl Crush. Actually, I think I didn't like the color on this. It was a little too much for me. It was just a little too out there, neon pinky coral. Um, so this one actually did not do the line thing, but it was just such a weird color. I don't know what I was thinking when I swatched it. Because you know, the lighting in a Sephora is so weird really need to take something to the window if you can get to a window and see what it looks like under daylight because it's so different this looks so pretty under the sephora lights and it's just neon hot pink coral it was just bad just bad all the way around so and that was called girl crush this is the sephora gloss lip gloss in the shade confident Let's see if i can give you this I didn't see a whole lot of color payout at all with this. I mean, it did make it a little bit shiny. There's no smell to it, which is nice, but I it never really dried down and it stayed sticky. And when I put my mask on, I, it was like my lip impression <laughs> on the inside of the mask. So I, I, just for that, I really can't keep it because it's not gonna be useful to me. It's very, very sticky as a lip gloss. And I've seen other people say they absolutely love this, and I thought it looked really pretty, but I can't handle that stickiness. And the fact that it comes off on my mask, then it smears all over my mouth when I put my mask back on. So, yeah, bad. Um, I did get the Tente Idol, or Tint Idol, Tint Idol, <laughs> from Lancome. Um, I love this. The only thing that this that always bothers me is this giant, huge, doe foot and they said they have it there so that you can um, use it as a foundation if you need to and that's really nice of them but really 
it's so large but I really like this a lot and it's worth the hype uh, I think that you know Lancome and I haven't always been the best of friends but I do like this uh, concealer a lot I think this is good and this is the shade 110 I believe 110 yes this is the, the shade 110 it's not too light for me it's really nice and it's not too dark which you don't want a concealer that's dark so <laughs> very good future editing me here um i forgot to mention a big one mac the mac stack mascara i got the um extra extra wand one it was absolutely one of the worst mascaras that i have used from mac the um i did take a picture of my eye uh after oh i'd say three or four hours look at my upper lid there where the mascara just wore right off of it it smeared it wore right off of it um, it did give me a nice looking lash, but I'm afraid the MAC stack did not work for me. Uh, those of you who uh, know me know, I am a donkey eyes. girl. Donkey all the way. I am not a Starbucks fan. So when I saw that uh, Elf was <laughs> collabing with Dunkin' Donuts, I thought, well, that's odd, but yeah, okay, I'll go with it. I'll go with it. I had a coffee lip scrub stick and it's not online you can't order it online and it wasn't in any of the four Ulta's I went into I went into four Ulta's looking for the coffee lip scrub and it's not there not there I don't know it did anybody get it did any of you get it it's not online <sighs> some people say that they like the lip glosses you have to buy the two together uh, I personally loved the um, the brushes looked like they were going to be good, but you couldn't buy them on their own. You had to buy the whole freaking set that was 75 bucks of everything in order to get the three brushes. I thought, you know what? They really made a huge mistake with this launch. Huge mistake. Plus those eyeshadow shades. I'm like, what? What? The, there was pink and yellow shimmer and and there was like one matte brown I think and it was everything else was all shimmery and glitter and I'm like you have to be 10 years old to like this because it's definitely there was not functional palettes I mean the Boston cream one was kind of functional but everything was all shimmers and glitter and I'm like forget that so I didn't get them and you had to buy the pack of three sets you couldn't buy them individually so you know, you had the three sets of that. You had the two different lip glosses. One was pink and one was orange. You had to get both of those together. And then they had the putty primer. So, <laughs> it looks like a donut box. <laughs> and um, it's supposed to represent glazed donuts, I think. I don't know how I feel about this. I love the colors, you know, the orange and the hot pink. This is their, um, their putty. It does smell like a donut. And this is their putty primer, their basic putty primer. So yeah, it's okay. It's okay. A little expensive <laughs> for what it is. But I had to jump on the um, Dunkin' Donuts wagon. I didn't want you to think I forgot about it or that I didn't know about it because I really tried. I almost bought the lip glosses and then it's like, I really don't like being forced to buy two when I only want one. I didn't want the orange one. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this, this launch was a fail because they could have done so much more. I mean, they could have made a chocolate palette with all the different chocolate lattes, strawberry lattes, espresso, the really dark. I mean, they could have really gone with extra cream, you know, an ivory one. Um, absolutely blew it. They blew it. So I'm really disappointed in you, Elf, for screwing up my favorite coffee shop. Um, these things from Essence, I know that they're pigmented and they have good quality and they're only like three or four bucks each. Um, I think it was Jen Phelps and I love her to death. She's adorable. Mirror and you've got six colors. Um, you know, it's like go coral or go home here. You don't have a whole lot of options. <laughs> but I did use these like sparingly as like you can use this right here maybe as a, an accent color and it looks nice you know I, I can work it in 
to other eye looks, but I can't do something with this. Oh my gosh. And this is a beautiful chocolate brown. Let me just put that there. You know, when I try something like this and then that Clinique, it just haunts me how bad that Clinique uh, eyeshadow set was. And this beautiful, this is a beautiful like shimmery color, which is really nice for underneath the eyes. You can put it underneath the eyes. Let's see if I can do that. Well, maybe not. Okay. Getting that coral thing. I don't want to look like I'm a heroin addict. Okay, and then we've got this gold right here. We can put it right here in the center of the lid. I guess I can use this freaking palette. I don't know. Well, they've got a blue one and a green one and a purple one and um, they've got a nude one. This is the coral one. There's a pink one. Um, I think these are, are wonderful for the price. If you pick up a few of them, you've got like a multi palette. If you open them all up at the same time, you can maybe use them all in conjunction with each other. I did send away for this because lots of people said they loved it. I got the I got the foundation too. The foundation went back a long time ago. <laughs> oh my god! Um, this is the Catrice a True Skin, the concealer. Oh come on, people! Who 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 did this work on? Not not anybody with dry skin. I mean, there's no way. This stuff dried down so bad, it cracked. It it looked terrible. It um, absolutely one of the worst concealers I've ever used. The True Skin. So it's got to be people with oily skin, younger people with not a lot of texture. I don't know. It's supposed to be 18 hours. Very drying. Very very bad 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 it did dry down and it did last but it looked like crap it really accentuates your wrinkles your lines and any dry patches of skin that you have so you know and you can argue and say well your skincare should be better for this to look better but no I have other concealers that work fine the tint adult and and uh, Kosas Kosas is fine the NYX bear with me is wonderful why is this so crappy? So it's not user error here. I mean, it's definitely, this did not work with my dry, agey, wrinkly old skin. And it just, you know, it did the crack thing on the inside here. You know, you get those cracks sometimes. You pull your skin out a little bit and you see all these cracks. So True Skin from Catrice was a fail for me. Okay, almost there. Um, I keep giving Morphe one more chance. And I keep getting disappointed. This is again definition of insanity. I keep giving them another chance thinking that the formula is going to be good, that something's going to be different, and it sucks. This one is the Ashley Strong um, palette from the Affirmation Magic palette. And I thought, well, this is a cool theme. I like the fact that it has the front, you know, the open doors there got an interesting color story with the beautiful greens and the shimmers but and this one is kind of an unusual kind of purpley periwinkle glitter but it's just there's just not enough here to make it work and the formulation was really crappy it's chalky it's a lot of fallout especially with um, any of the shimmers um, so, you know, and this one is just so dark. It, they look different on your eyes than they do in the pan. And there, in its boldness, is that damn sunflower color, which I hate, the mustard sunflower. And that looks exactly like it does in the pan, of course it would. <laughs> um, you know, and the usual generic, this is a pretty, pretty gold. Let me just put that in the center of the eye here. You know, this has a couple of colors in it that I think are very, very good to add, like a little pizzazz to other palettes, but it's just nothing you can use on its own at all. And I, you know, I watched her do it, but she's, you know, like a young woman. She's, um, she's got um, darker skin tone than I do. These colors all work really well for her, but it just doesn't look good on me, little old lady. Little old lady. Didn't, didn't work out here. So the Ashley Strong is um, a fail from Morphe. I like this from ColourPop. This was a uh, brush set. Comes with its own like 
little stand here for the brushes to be put into, but I'm going to take that out. Every single one of these brushes was excellent. Every single one, and I have washed them now twice. See how clean and nice they look? They wash well, they keep their shape, really, really nice. I'm absolutely uh, pleased with them. Now, and there's just a nice assortment here of, and I love this one. It's got the little ball on the end, this one here. Uh, that's really good for up in this corner area. So, I mean, this is a great little set, and it wasn't very much, and it comes with a leather-like case. Um, it's fake leather, but it's cute, and it'll hold a lot of my other eye brushes, which I was thinking of, you know, trying to organize a little bit here. I <laughs> also have a face brush version of this, which I didn't purchase, which looked like it had some good stuff, because face brushes are not my... I, I'm not low on those, but I, this is from ColourPop. This is the NYX. Um, this is a new um, lip liner. It's Line Loud Lip Pencil. And this is Born to Hustle. Born to Hustle. Really, really cute. Wears down very, very easily, though. And what I didn't know, and I tried to sharpen it, was that it turns from the bottom. <laughs> and I tried to sharpen mine. Oh, this is like when you put the corkscrew in the wine and then you find out it's a screw top. It's the same thing with me with these things. You turn it from the bottom and it comes up. Um, I forget I have ruined mine. It's a pretty color, it's a really pretty color. Born to Hustle. I think they mean the disco kind of hustle. <laughs> and that's from NYX. So that is my April Faves and Flops. A little bit early, but darn, I had a lot of stuff, huh? My goodness. Yeesh. Thank you again for your good sportsmanship watching those funeral videos. And if you haven't, you may want to because it's awfully important information. Um, and I promise I won't do anything like that again. That was, <laughs> was a bit much, and it was so much research. Oh my God. I saw some things I shouldn't have seen, like that song. I've seen, I've seen things that a woman ain't supposed to see. I've been to paradise, but I've never been to me. <laughs> yeah, when I was researching the death and stuff, I mean, I was seeing actual pictures of real corpses that were getting dissolved and stuff, and it's like, some of that stuff just doesn't leave you. It just, you just keep seeing that, you know. So I, so I made the decision not to show any of the graphic photos to you. I would imply where you could look for them, but I, I just don't want to share that with you. I think the whole thing, and I left out so much. I mean, one of the main things I wanted to bring up was that once you get your funeral all set up and you get your will done and everything, you can really live and enjoy yourself and get out there to that Earth, Wind and Fire concert and go to the Brimfield Art Fair and go to the Big E Festival and go to the, the Fan ex Expo and finally meet Brendan Fraser in person. I mean, it's just like you can live and enjoy your life and get out there and do it, you know. And then once you've got all your funeral crap and all that stuff out of the way, it is just like getting your laundry done. You can now relax because you know everything's okay. If something happens, everything's okay. You don't want to think about the something happens. I think that's a bad part here. But and I always love reading your comments, and I learn a lot from you as well. It's a two-way street here. You know, I'm not Miss Know-It-All on everything. I mean, I know a lot, but I don't know everything. So I always learn new things from you, and I always appreciate constructive criticism. Not meanness, just constructive criticism. I'm good. I'm good. We're good. We're good, boo. <laughs> Have a wonderful week and have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles. No, I can't wear this. <laughs>